Welcome to the Slovakia ring for the fourth round of the GT1 World Championship in 2012. Beautiful weather we've got here for GT1's first visit to Slovakia. Hayley, you were here last year with FIA GT3. What can you tell us about the place? Well, we know this year that Peter Park's not joining Ryter this weekend, so we have local driver Stefan Racina. Now, he was fantastic in the GT3 European Championship last year. He got fastest lap and also he got pole here. So I'm expecting him to do so well. We've seen him a little bit in free practice and he's been getting some great lap time. So I think he's going to be, going to be fantastic. Also, Mike Parisi, he got a win here last year in GT3. So I'm expecting to see him up there as well. So let's have a look and let's wait and see. Absolutely. Yeah. Andreas Zuber holds the um, lap record here as well when he was competing in Euroboss a couple of years ago. There's a great little fact for you. <laughs> John, you uh, drop them in, you drop them in, Jack. <laughs> I do, I like to. Uh, the McLarens had a great weekend at Navarra and presumably they'll think they can continue their form this weekend. Well, in my opinion, just seeing the circuit for the first time, you couldn't have created a better circuit because the McLaren, clearly we saw in Navarra, now they've got the reliability to go with the performance, very strong package, and that these quick corners, and there are some corners that are very quick here, suit the aerodynamic downforce that the McLaren generates. The only caveat I have is that we saw in Navarra when Alvaro Perez got caught behind the two Alenka Mercedes that he struggled to get past. And that was partly because he was losing downforce by being close to those cars, but also the heat that he was generating because he wasn't getting cool air into the radiators, both to cool the engine but also to cool the turbocharging, meant that he was losing a little bit of horsepower as well. But if they get ahead of the field and can run in their own clear air, they're going to be hard to stop. We certainly saw that. And uh, you may remember last year in GT3 as well, we saw some great shots of the cars coming up with the front end of their cars over the crest here. Now, that's going to be a little bit different this, uh, this season, isn't it, John? Look, you know, in my time of racing, at Nürburgring, you're the foot collapse, you're the France car, you get all these areas of racetracks where cars got airborne but it's been deemed inappropriate, unsafe, in the current form that we accept as motor racing generally and in GT1 and GT3 around the world. So the, the outcome is that on the engine of turn two, before the fluke plants, which is what I call it, we're going to have now a tyre chicane. Now the exit of turn two is quite a quick exit, and from the exit to the chicane is a relatively short distance, so it's been deemed principally on force majeure reasons, that that area, maybe about 100 metres, 150 metres maximum, will be a yellow flag zone. So there will be no overtaking into that tyre chicane. I don't think it's going to be a big problem. I think drivers probably are unhappy about it, but then they're always unhappy. <laughs> and uh, I think we'll hopefully see a lot of exciting motor racing throughout the event around the entire circuit. But that one area will be a yellow flag zone. So no overtaking into the chicane. Absolutely. It's going to be uh, operated in a similar way to the hairpin of Macau that is constantly under yellow flag. But having said that, coming out of the chicane, there is a hairpin following straight after. So a good run through the chicane will be able to uh, help you down into the hairpin. So we've got plenty of quick teams to watch for, plenty of quick cars to listen for as well, if you can hear us over this din. And it should be a fantastic weekend of racing here in the GT1 World Championship.